All right, now let's take a look at our small intestine. So all of this right here is our small intestine. Here is showing the large intestine. Now the small intestine is called the small intestine not due to its, di uh, its length, but due to its diameter. Uh, so our small intestine is five to six meters long. So you can think about this 18 to 20 feet in length is how long our small intestine is. So functions of it. So one, it completes the digestion of the nutrients and chyme, completely breaks them down. Uh, it is a major organ of absorption. So it's going to absorb those products of digestion. And then it's going to transport the residues uh, to the large intestine. So let's look at parts of the small intestine. So the first beginning part right here is the duodenum. So it's the smallest part as well, but it receives uh, secretions from uh, the gallbladder, from the liver, and also from uh, the pancreas. So if we go back, just a few pictures here, maybe a little bit more. No, that's right there. So you can see that's where that is. There's the duodenum secretions from the pancreas. I think I passed one up that was right here. And you can see all three of those putting secretions in the, into the duodenum. Okay, so in here are duodenal glands uh, and they're gonna secrete an alkaline mucus because if you remember, the stomach would be right here. So uh, those, that acidic chyme is coming right into there. All right, now the next section is here. So the next section is a jejunum. This is a middle part portion of the, of the, of the small intestine and also the longest. Next is the ileum, so the ileum is the end here. So the ileum uh, is the last part, and in there, and I know you can't see this, but there's a valve right at the end of the ileum called the ileocecal valve. Um, and this prevents backflow of substances uh, from the large intestine. So that way, stuff in here isn't getting pushed back into our small intestine. Next is mesentery, which you can see here in yellow. So it's actually not part of our small intestine. I just know where else to put this. So the mesentery is a double layer fold of peritoneal membrane, okay, which is a serous membrane. And so this suspends portions of the small intestine. It also supports blood vessels, which you can see uh, nerves and lymphatic vessels to the small intestine. So let's look at uh, the microscopic anatomy. So, the small intestine is highly adapted uh, for nutrient absorption. If you were to take the small intestine and spread it out, uh, it would spread out to about 2,100 square feet. Uh, so uh, that's a pretty long, er large area. Uh, so it's geared to absorb nutrients there. So several structures that we see in here to uh, increase surface area. So one are these circular folds. So you can see those there. These are deep folds in the mucosa and submucosa, and they're about one centimeter thick. So these are also shown those circular folds there. What they also do is they force chyme to spiral through the lumen, so the opening. So instead of the, the chyme just moving this way, it gets twisted as it gets moved through. And so that slow movement of the chyme through there uh, allows for more nutrient absorption. Next are villi. Veli are these finger-like projections um, uh, into the lumen, all right? Uh, so uh, they are lined by, uh, you know, they're made of mucus, part of the mucosa. They're about one millimeter in height there. Uh, they contain a capillary bed to absorb nutrients, and they contain a lacteal, which is this green structure there, which is the lymphatic vessel, all right? So uh, they are lined by simple columnar epithelial cells. And so on those simple columnar epithelial cells, so that's what we see right there, uh, there even the plasma membrane has some um, uh, structures on this. And this is known as the brush border. So this is a blow up of just uh, some of those uh, simple columnar cells there at the end. So it creates this brush border uh, or also known as the microvilli. These are tiny projections of the plasma membrane. And that's what we were seeing there. And they produce brush border, brush border enzymes. Uh, so these are gonna complete the digestion of carbohydrates and proteins. Also in here, you're gonna see some intestinal glands. So there's an intestinal gland showing right there. These are gonna secrete intestinal juices, uh, which are made of uh, alkaline uh, mucus, 
water, and lysozymes. So, uh, so lysozymes are antibacterial agents. All right, so if we look at the histology here of the small intestine, if we look in the mucosa, all right, uh, the cells are mainly absorptive. We do have goblet cells in here to produce mucus. Uh, we have many lymphocytes. This layer regenerates fairly rapidly in three to six days. In the uh, submucosa, which I don't have a picture of, uh, we, do, we can find Peyer's patches, which are lymphoid tissue follicles, and these are gonna increase towards the end of the ileum, and they're gonna defend against bacteria from the large intestine. All right, let's look at absorption in the small intestine. Most digestive enzymes uh, come from our pan pancreas, all right? So even though we do secrete some here, most of our digestive enzymes are gonna come from the pancreas, not the small intestine itself. But the broken down products of carbohydrates, which are monosaccharides, and proteins, which are amino acids, and nucleic acids, which are nucleotides, are simply going to diffuse into the blood, all right? Electrolytes and vitamins are going to diffuse into the bloodstream as well, and water is going to follow those by osmosis. Fatty acids and glycerol, which are the broken down products of fats and oils, these are going to diffuse into intestinal cells. From there, they're going to be encased in proteins, and from there, they move into the lacteal. And from the lacteal, they're going to move throughout the lymphatic system and eventually drain into venous circulation. Let's look at movements in the small intestine. I don't think I have any of these to show on movements, no. So movements in the small intestine, we kind of talked about this earlier, all right? So segmentation is used to mix and move the chyme through the small intestine. So it takes anywhere from three to five hours for chyme to pass through that small intestine. Peristalsis will occur when most of the nutrients have been absorbed. This is gonna push chyme and whatever else is there into the large intestine. So that includes the chyme, bacteria, and mucosal cells, all right? And when we get into the large intestine, now we call that feces. Now, if the small intestine is overdescended or if it's irritated, this is gonna cause a peristaltic rush to occur. And so this is gonna move all the contents there into the large intestine very quickly. So the problem with that is not everything is absorbed. So if you get an irritant, you're just gonna push everything through. So like a, a viral infection or a bacterial infection, you're just gonna push stuff through very quickly. And that results in diarrhea, which is a frequent defecation and a watery stool.